This is Ivan Alon, the Chief Investment Officer for Align Wealth Advisors Investment Management, also known as AWAIM. Today, I uh, wanted to talk about a uh, item that is very important for the capital markets, and that is comparing one asset class to another asset class when you're thinking about investing, thinking about making allocations in your portfolio. Uh, certainly one of the things we look at is something called the equity risk premium or ERP um, as it's uh, uh, abbreviated in, uh, in professional cir circles. Um, ERP uh, sounds very complicated and frankly they, they've made it very complicated. The industry uh, certainly has a lot of different uh, perspectives on what makes up a proper evaluation of an equity risk premium. but. Uh, I think it's very helpful just to look at it in a very simple way, which is how much more return per unit of risk are you receiving from buying into stocks instead of holding some other kind of uh, risk-free asset, like a treasury bond, for example. So it is basically a premium or you know, extra amount that you would get uh, in, in holding uh, a stock versus holding a fixed income uh, instrument uh, or a risk-free uh, fixed income instrument like Treasury, uh, which is considered a risk-free rate, although some people, of course, nowadays would argue with that considering uh, recent events, but for the sake of uh, uh, evaluation and keeping simplicity, uh, we'll assume the U.S. Treasury is a risk-free rate. So the phenomena that's occurring today is something we haven't seen since the great financial crisis, or basically around 2007. And uh, what it is, is, uh, is very interesting. It's highlighted behind me uh, on our website under Research Highlights. Uh, if you go there, you can go to Four Advisors and then drop down to Research Highlights. And you'll see, uh, I've circled a couple of areas there, the pre-2007 uh, to a pre GFC uh, crisis around 2007, and then uh, also again uh, recent uh, history, uh, where we're seeing this phenomenon demonstrate again, which essentially shows the earnings yield of the S and P 500 and the 10-year U.S. Treasury uh, looking very similar, uh, and that is uh, it's maybe somewhat alarming. Uh, but if you even look at shorter-term U.S. Treasuries you'll see that those rates are even higher and uh, and some may argue that uh, actually the earnings yield on the S&P 500, which essentially is just uh, the price earnings ratio flipped on its head. Um, so it's earnings per share divided by price instead of price divided by earnings per share. And, uh, and it shows if, something that's very interesting, which is basically that a risk-free rate, like the U.S. Treasury, in particular even short-term Treasury bonds, are actually uh, yielding or returning more than the anticipated return of the S&P 500 on a forward earnings basis. Um, so this is even taking into account forward earnings based on current estimates, um, which are not even that uh, uh, bad. Uh, they're not really fully pricing in a recession. Certainly, uh, the top seven companies in the S&P 500 are not pricing in a recession or hit to their earnings um, to the magnitude that uh, that that we may think. Uh, so this is this is interesting and something certainly that would make us less uh, excited about uh, allocating into U.S. large cap equities right now. It's certainly part of our investment thesis as to why. Um, in our client portfolios, we're currently uh, significantly underweight U.S. large cap equities and, um, and something worth, of course, consideration when you're evaluating where to put your money. Uh, certainly the S&P 500 looks like it's had an amazing run this year, which it has, but when you really look closer at that, per my um, recent podcast called Bad Breath, bad bre not Bad Breath, Bad Breath, uh, it, it's talking about that, it, it, which is that there's basically only seven companies which are responsible for you know, basically 90% of all of the return of the S&P 500 year to date. So, um, so it's certainly not a widespread 
uh, not many companies, not you know, it's in our analysis that we that I shared, it's about 28 percent of the S&P 500 com constituents are actually uh, doing better, at, at least uh, the same as or better than the S&P 500 return year to date. So that means 72 percent of the stocks out there are are actually doing worse. Uh, most of them are doing significantly worse uh, within the S&P 500. So, so there's just not a widespread participation of, of stocks in this upswing year to date. And so then when looking at this uh, earnings yield phenomenon, comparing it to a risk-free rate uh, in order to really assess uh, an equity risk premium and the, really, is it worth it? Is it worth it to be allocating so much when you can get really great returns uh, in in the markets elsewhere, uh, away from equity, certainly away from S and P five hundred market cap weighted index. So uh, that's my update for you today. Something to uh, think about and consider. Of course, if you have any questions at all, always feel free to email us at info at alignwealthllc.com. That's info at alignwealthllc.com, or call us at three one zero seven nine five zero six two two. Thanks so much.